Hello everyone, my name is Marisha. My name is Gracious. And today's topic today's topic is Is your obedience sincere? And bring it up my sister just mentioned about Saul and his disobedience and how he first started off well. He obeyed the Lord, the fear of the Lord was upon him, because once the fear of the Lord was upon him, and there it was another nation that needed help for battle, they needed need assistance. And then that is when they asked King Saul for help. And Saul agreed, like, yes, we'll help you. And then he sent out to everybody. He told them, hey, and he, he bought a, I believe it was a, it was a oxen. He cut it up and he sent it down throughout the whole city. Mm -hmm. And then he told them, if you do not join this war with me, this will be you. So everybody had to fight. And that was part of one of the consequences of having a king. Because at, before Saul was king, children of Israel, they were mm -hmm. asking for a king. Mm -hmm. Because they wanted, to ref they wanted to, they rejected God basically. And they wanted someone to govern them rather than God. So what happened was, God said, hey, Samuel, tell the people, if you want a king, this is going to happen. Your children, your men, they'll have to, they will have to fight war. Your daughters will be servants. You will pay taxes to the king. Your land will be for the king. And you basically... You have to give to the king all the time. And Saul, Saul excuse me, Samuel, he went ahead and told them, uh, hey, this is what this is what it Christ to have a king. You still want like, yes, I still want a king. I'm like, fine. And it happened. And the first thing that happened as a king, when Saul was obedient, the men had to go to war. And they did win the war. And the fear of the Lord was, up, was upon Saul. And it was going great. But then he messed up by fearing people rather than God. What do I mean? Because at one time they were, about to, they were supposed to fight, and Samuel said to wait here. An eight, an eight day, right? Seven. The seven days. Yeah, so yeah seven, seven, days. seven days. But the eighth day he came. Mm -hmm. So seven days passed. No, wait. Samuel told Saul, "Wait seven days here. Wait for me, and did I do anything?" And that is when the seven day came. Samuel did not come. So Saul went ahead and did his own thing, made a sacrifice, and just did what he wanted to do because he felt it was a good to do so. So that is when eighth day comes, Samuel comes. And Samuel asks, what did you do? What are you doing? He's like, well, the, the men were leaving, and we were afraid. So he basically said, well, I had to just take control. I had to do what I had to do because there was no help, and I needed to do something. And by him doing that, and doing something at his heart, which God didn't approve, caused him to do something at disobedience because it was not his position to make sacrifice. It was not his position to not listen to the man of God. Even the man of God said the seventh day, but he came on the eighth day. He still should have been patient, regardless of who left, because mm -hmm. he should even know the story of Gideon. He won the battle with 300 men. Mm -hmm. It started off with thousands. And uh, remember, the Poles inside the Philippines had like hundreds of thousands of people. But he won the battle with 300 men. But no, these records, these testimonies, he was not keeping in. He, he, didn't, he wasn't taking heed of what the Lord can do rather than what he can do. Mm -hmm. And it caused him to disobey the Lord. I was thinking about how even we have to be mindful of ourselves because even with Saul, he was afraid he was more so focused on the people he was more so concerned of those who were in position to p support him so when he saw that his support was being taken away and people were now leaving him it caused him to move in fear so regardless of who's supporting you or who is supporting you we have to face it within our hearts to say no i'm still gonna serve the lord and i'm still gonna do what god is telling me to do because this is what the instruction were that I was last given so I'm going to submit to what was last said you know we may in various times we may want to sway over here because that counsel or that directive may seem more appeasing to us they're leaving us they're walking away what am I supposed to do we're having to go to war and now it went from this amount of people to this amount of people so what should I do in those moments, though, um, a person may feel flustered, but what should the, what should the, 
objective be what should be what should that be that should be going back to the first instruction that was given unto the person from the very beginning if he would have just waited if he would not had allowed what he saw with his natural eyes mm -hmm. um if he would not have let what he saw naturally dictate what he did, then he would have still stayed in position before God and man. And that was Samuel because he was submitting unto Samuel as unto the Lord because Samuel was the prophet in time. At the, in time. And that made me think about how even with the man of God, the prophet, I think it was Elisha, where his servant, they were coming against Elisha. Um, they were coming to get him because... Um, Elisha kept telling the king of Israel or one of the kings Elisha, what, yeah. what was going on. The they He kept telling the king what was... Okay, so there was two... One king was trying to go up against the children of Israel and God kept revealing their plans to the, the prophet and he kept telling the king what was going to happen so they could not fall into the traps to that snare of the plot of the enemy so what happened was okay so oh they're gonna attack you from this way that's what the man of god would tell the the king and the king would do something else and then it was found out later on that like man how's this person somebody's trading somebody's a traitor somebody's against us that's what they were thinking it was like no that's the the man of god is telling what telling what your conversations what you're talking about in your bedroom is he's, he's telling your business so he sent them to go get him and elisha's servant went out and he saw these hosts and what was his response when what was elijah's response to his servant concerning that matter he said lord open his eyes to see that they're more with us than against us so even in those situations in order to not respond in fear or anxiety or the a doubt and unbelief rather than doing that we need to position ourselves to see and hear from god's perspective concerning the matter because even david and his mighty men they were um supposed to be going to battle at the time but they were supposed to be going to battle with the philistines but the philistines said no we're not gonna you guys can't come with us because maybe in the midst of battle you guys might um go back and go back to submit the song right switch sides and and go against us so they go back and when they went back to ziklag i believe that was the name of it they found out that everything was all of their possessions were taken and gone so now it's time to go everybody's crying everybody's crying they're now emotional to the point where they want to stone david david's faithful men now they want to stone him because you know we're following you basically and now you done got us put in position where all of our possessions are gone our wives are gone our kids are gone we don't know what may be happening i don't even know what is going on with my wife at the moment and they're so overwhelmed they want to kill david stone him but david encouraged himself in the lord he sought the lord so even in our in those moments of even in those moments we have to go to the lord because if we don't do that then we're going to act out in what our emotions and what we're seeing with our natural eyes we're going to act out in those things and that's going to cause us to step outside of the will of god and then causes us to be out of position and which will cause us to be judged from the lord because that's what happened with um saw he stepped out of position because of his fears because of what was what the people were doing not understanding that he should have submitted to the order so we have to grow in that and i like how she brought up the point where they're ready to betray david david is a mighty man of god remember the history of david david kills ten thousand, but saw one thousand so and people left saw side to go on david's side so these people, these people are dedicated these people are mighty men of war these people are top notch as you call killers like hey you, you want to get this job done these this is it and the, those, are the, those are the type of people that wanted to kill david they had they had the opportunity they had the heart just to kill people mm -hmm. but what happened david he encouraged himself in the lord and he prayed and asked the Lord, can he go? The Lord said, yes. So he told the man, hey, let's go. Some of them were still emotionally weak. Like, well, mm -hmm. fine, you guys stay here. Stay with the things, but we're going to go. And when they left, they were able to take the spoil of the people who stole their things, their wives, and the church back. So they, they came back and went home with more than what they really had. And what does that show? That shows faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Due to the faithfulness of David, the faithfulness of David, 
God protect them. God spared them, their children and their wives and their belongings. And they got an abundance. So people want the abundance. People want their lives to protect it and to be blessed. Mm -hmm. But your lifestyle is cursed. People are living more like Saul. Like your obedience is not sincere mm -hmm. to the Lord. You you ready just to let go and bad, things bad happen? Yeah. At the moment, their wives and children are gone. They're ready just to kill David. Like it's done. Like we're done. It's over with. I'm done. Like yeah, this Christian thing is too hard. I thought I thought it was gonna be easy. Like my mom died, my dad died. This happened, and people are talking bad about my faith. And this is this is discouraging. I can't even go shopping anymore because I'm a Christian. I, I need the market of beast. I need this. I can't have that. It's too much. I can't do it. Yeah, because you're looking at material things, temporary things. But the Lord is trying to shift our hearts unto things that, that are eternal, things that He is actually in control of. So it's a matter of trusting Him and giving your life to Him. So that means it requires repentance sincere repentance unto the Lord, meaning transformation in your life where you are turning into light, where you are the light of the world because you know the world is dark. And when you submit to God, the devil will flee. No, you submit to God, resist the devil, and the devil will flee. So that means it, it takes intentionality. Like, hey, I need to make a decision to obey God. I need to make a decision where my faith is great enough where I can agree with God and I can live like a Christian, live how I'm supposed to be, and I can also please God. So if I'm pleasing God, God will protect me, He will prosper me, and He will purify me. So that means there's change has to happen while the Lord's blessing me and preparing me to do His work. Because mm -hmm. not, not, He's not only blessing me so I can have things and be very knowledgeable in the Word and to be a powerful ministry minister. But like, no. He's blessing you so you have the, so you be equipped enough to bless others, to bring mm -hmm. others into the kingdom. But people think, oh, that's not it. It's all about holding hands, youth retreat, couple retreats, um, children retreat, have fun, pray a warrior, sit down, write a book, devotionals, and it's all done. Like, no, this is a lifestyle, people. Mm -hmm. Like, true repentance brings change, and there will be adversity. Why? It's not to make you discouraged. Like, no, you go through the suffering because the glory that will be revealed in you is going to be greater. Like, God is greater than what it is now. Like, yes, people love you. People love to hear you. But does the Lord love you? Does the Lord even love to hear you? Is he mindful of you? Because the Lord, he can know you and ignore you. He He can know you and ignore you. Ignore you. Why do I say that? He even did that to the children of Israel. Hmm. They cried out like, oh, Lord, we sinned. It's our fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to do so the Lord can hear? You have to be faithful. You have to be mindful like, hey, my action doesn't only affect me, but people around me and the earth. Mm -hmm. Not just me, but the earth. And people can be affected by my decisions. If I marry my wife, if you're a man, because a man of God, like you're the head. You cover your household. So the moment you let adultery come in your heart, look on another woman away sexually in your heart, or a man. Because at times they're getting perverted. You look and mm -hmm. ponder these and we see the opposite gender. You are bringing perversion to your house. You're on social media on your phone and doing things. Or whatever evilness, perversion, murder, sexual, whatever. You're opening that stuff into your home. Mm -hmm. And not just that, your physical home, but your body, because mm -hmm. your body's for the Holy Spirit. And the word of God says your eye needs to be single. So mm -hmm. your eye's not single. You're looking at these evil things. Not only your home, your wife, your children are open and exposed to that, but your heart, mm -hmm. your life, your whole body. Like this evil makes your whole body evil. That's why the Lord wants holiness. Because mm -hmm. you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So he wants good things to be out, not just evil all the time. Like he wants trueness. He wants transformation. He wants the reality because he's the truth. And once we submit to reality that he is God and he is Lord and me surrendering, you're surrendering to him and making a touch of decision to be like him, then he can work in your world and he can bring what, like as, as the prayer says, on earth as it is in heaven, mm -hmm. then that can manifest before your eyes. And that's where faith comes in. Believing in things you cannot see, hoping that this is going to happen, hoping that what you're living out in doing is going to happen. So that's why it produces obedience and hope. Amen. Amen. So our encouragement is to make sure your obedience is sincere because if not, the Lord can reject you. Just as he rejected the, the sons of Aaron. It was a strange fire. It came mm -hmm. from their heart. Like, this is not like a good idea. 
we always do this, but no, there's order. There's a way that God wanted them to do it, but no, it seemed like, you know, it's modern. It's temporary. We got to make the way that make the kids, the youth like it, make the people in the church like it. Yeah, you do these strange things. And now you wonder about this perversion in your church. Mm -hmm. Why are children, why are teenagers having babies? Why is the, why the fornication amongst us? Why, why are our youth in prison? What is going on? Why, when they go to school and college, they come back atheists? What's really going on? Yeah, because you lack the power mm -hmm. of God and you lack the word of God in the churches. So once you submit to the word of God wholeheartedly and there's power and there's the word, then you can effectively be a son of God and be his child, be a disciple, be a Christian. And if not, the Lord will not accept anything you have. So don't even expect your prayers to be answered. Mm -hmm. And the Lord talks about, if you read Proverbs, read Psalms, like, Lord does not answer prayers of the wicked, of liars, double tongue. No, the Lord will not listen to you. Like, he will mm -hmm. not hearken, as I said, the Lord will not, he will not listen to your prayers. It's evil. It's an abomination if you're an evil person, but yet you want God to answer your prayers. Like, that doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. So, it does not be. I was thinking about, um, I did want to comment on something that you were saying. Um, you were referencing how at some point, God stopped delivering the children of Israel. I think that was in, I don't know. Multiple I times. Think was, okay. So I, I remember that they kept going into bondage because of their idolatry, because of their sin and their disobedience. And then they would remember the Lord in that, oh, wait, he's our deliverer. So Jesus, God, you know, calling on God to save them. And then God will save them. And he kept doing that. And at some point, he stopped doing that. He had stopped doing that because God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So it's not, I'm saying that because we can, people can sin and sin and just say, oh, I can just say, I'm sorry. I can just repent, Lord, forgive me, and then go back and do the same thing. Or I can commit this act of sin and then go to church and then just, you know, cry out to the Lord and he's going to deliver me. He's going to remove all of these devils from me. He's going to do all of these things for me and then I'll be fine. And then later on down the line, a situation similar will begin to happen again. And then I'll just go back and do the same thing. It's all great, right? Lord, you're going to deliver me, right? No, that's not the case because at some point we have to acknowledge that what we're, what that specific report in the Bible is talking about is how God is not going to always do that for a person because there's a time in the space in that yes some of us may need to repeat a matter because in every situation that every sinful situation every situation that we may find ourselves in God could be pulling back layers of unrighteousness and ungodliness and we know that that's happening because the person becomes wiser they be they begin to understand like okay no this is bad this is wrong and then they may fall into it again but the outcome of it is I've, I'm learning um, I'm seeing my ways that are not pleasing before the Lord and then there's that final breakthrough where they're they may experience it again they may fall into that same sin or that same mentality way of thinking and then God strongly delivers that person to where he seals the door and he shuts that person he never allows that person to go off and commit that sin to that degree anymore but then you have those who sin and then they just keep doing it repetitively those are the ones that God kind of shuts that door and he's doing it for two reasons because he's not trying to make a people spoil and he's not trying to He's holy. He's holy. And he's just in everything that he's doing. So he's not a God that you can mock in that way in that I can just do wrong and just say, I'm sorry. Like, no, that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. A good father, he, ch they, he chastens his sons. And if you are, and if you are without chastisement, then are you bastards? So God does that because he's trying to perfect us in that you need to understand that every time you sin is not just a matter of I'm going to sin and then say, I'm sorry. And then go back and do it again like, like no you need to learn you need to learn to do well you need to learn how to do well you need to understand that what you're doing is wrong and I need you to do it my way so I thought about that when you brought that up so that's what I wanted to say so yeah so this video today is to encourage you to be obedient to make sure it's sincere so if not, the Lord will shut that door mm -hmm. and he has the final say he has the final judgment mm -hmm. so Make your election sure by obeying the Lord. Seek him first. Repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. In Jesus' name.